Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I have a really cool video. Everyone has been asking me where I got my angel eyes from and unfortunately they do not make them anymore. They are called Kaladis or angel eyes or something like that. They're around a hundred bucks. And as many of you guys have commented, you can see the individual rings of the actual LED. So today I actually got sent out angel eyes from the angel eye guy. Here's his card. And he sent me out a pair of clear well, they're white and you can only have one band, so you don't have to see all the individual LEDs. You'll see what I'm talking about, but it's basically an opaque band that's going around the actual LED. So it looks like one continuous solid line, and this is what they look like. So I'm just going to do an install video showing you what they look like, showing the what they look like after, and, how, and I'll just give my opinions on how they compare, and eventually a review video of what I think of these over my old angel eyes. So we'll get started with the installation. I'll do an overview of everything that it came with and then I'll show you guys how to install it. So the kit that I got is actually, I forgot to say, is actually a turn signal kit. So these rings also go amber. So in the set, if you get projectors versus, if you have projectors or halogens, you will get two different um, types of rings. So be mindful of that. What you get is the two drivers. This is the extension cable to run to the actual um, turn signals. And one thing to note is you cannot use the front turn signals. You have to use the side turn signals. These are some clips to mount it. Some connectors to connect to the wires and the actual harness. And that's what we're going to start by running is the actual harness and then we'll do the lights. So we're going to start with running the wiring harness and then we'll do the LEDs. Um, one thing I should also note is I am also replacing my lenses with brand new lenses. So I'll, you guys will kind of see how to do that. It's I mean, you got to take them off to do it anyways. So I'm going to start by running this harness around the car and it does connect to, you can't see it, but over here, yes, it connects to the positive up front and there's a negative and also connects to the DME box and it has to connect inside the car so they can fade on and on and off with the key. If you like that, if not, you will not hook that up to the inside of your car. One other thing, the last thing I should mention is I'm actually taking out, as I said, I have to take out my old angel eyes so you'll see me pull them out. I already pulled out the harness, so that's why some things are kind of done, but I'll show you how I did it. All right, so here is the harness, like I mentioned. So you want to have the actual um, relay sitting over here this where the empty box is and that's where you have your positive and negative terminals that you will attach. So now I'm taking the red, um, the positive lead and touching it to and smushing it in between the power that's coming to the front with this nut, and I believe the nut is a 19. 19 millimeter nut. So you can just attach it there and it should fit right around it. You shouldn't have to worry about actually, um, I thought the terminal was gonna be too big, but it is the correct size, which is good. And then you have a couple options for where you do wanna put the negative. I'm going to put the negative down here on the other correct, uh, ground point, but some people do put it on the strut mount. I think this is a better spot to put it personally. So that's where I'm going to put it and just make sure these are nice and tight. And I should say, disconnect your battery before doing it. Some people just disconnect um, the actual positive terminal. I don't think that's a good idea. You should always disconnect the negative. Okay, a couple more things to note. The white cable run to the inside of the cabin. This single black spade connector will the coated black and it's red in the inside. Spaded connector is the one that goes to the DME. I'll show you where to hook that up. And then the long one with the negative and positive is for the right side angel eye. So you're gonna run it over here. And I'm gonna run it, I'm gonna put it right where the positive lead goes. I'm gonna stick it right up there. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is route this cable, like I said, to the DME box with the other um, angel eye cable. So you want to remove right here, there's a plastic cover. It looks like this. And there is going to be three Allen keys, which are number five. And I had a bolt right here, doesn't look factory. I'm assuming there should be five Allen keys on here. So they're all, I mean, sorry, four Allen keys and it's a number five Allen key to take it off. So just undo all, all of them, pull up on it. And then the next thing you wanna do 
is look for this cable. There's only one cable that's like that, that is red with a white stripe and yellow dots on it. You wanna tap into that cable with one of these type style connectors and it should come in the kit. You squeeze it around the cable and you plug in the spade connector into it like that. And since you can see where I already kind of went into it once because I had old angel eyes, which I'm not too happy about, but we're gonna to try to go in the same spot. So the next thing you're going to do is take this white wire, and this is only if you want the angel eyes to fade on and off when you unlock and lock your car, which most people do. You're gonna take this white wire, and right here is uh, part of the firewall. You're going to want to feed it through. You're going to have to take it out and cut it open with something. Mine has already been cut open because I've done this, so I'm gonna feed it through. And then I'll show you how to grab it on the inside. Five screws, the glove box just comes down. Be careful because you do have a connector right here and you can leave the other one. Um, the other one comes out through the bottom or you can just leave it in place. And this is the one we're gonna tap into it. Now, the firewall is up in here. I gotta take, get down there and see where I can, it's gonna be hard to show where it actually is when we find out the precise location and I'll show you guys where it is. All right, so you can kind of see where it comes through. Right up through there, you can see the rubber, and then you can see the wire. You just pulled through, and then uh, we're gonna connect it. It is the red wire on this light. It's right here where we're splicing into. This is the old um, connector. We're gonna be using the new style, where this just slides into it. So that is what it looks like once it's tapped into the footwell on the passenger side. And like we said earlier, it needs to go to the red wire and that's the positive for the actual light. And then the white wire is running to it. I'm going to now put the glove box back in and put this back on the car. So it's now time to start removing the headlight and to remove the headlight, if you have the screw and type of um, turn signals, which if you're doing this, you probably know what type you have, you're going to use a screwdriver. If not, you can pull it right out. So. I have the screw in type, it's just a Phillips head. You don't need to undo it all the way, just loosen it up, because the actual um, Phillips head does not come out all the way. The next thing you do need to do is remove this bottom clip. It is kind of difficult to remove, I'm not gonna lie. Um, what I recommend is pulling on this side and it comes out a little bit. And then for this side, you're going to take a screwdriver, put it inside of it, flathead, and push all the way in to the inner clip. And like I said, if you have one of these cars that has, that has this, you probably know how to take it out. And it comes out just like that. Now it is raining outside, so I'm probably gonna wipe down my headlight a little. Now we also have to remove this piece, the top piece right here. And I have new ones of these, because mine are all screwed up, but there's just clips and you can pull out. Yeah, it would definitely be easier to do it off the car, but like I said, I don't care about mine, so I'm not going to do that. So now what you can do is actually pop off the headlight. There's clips here, here, here and all on the bottom. Try to go carefully with them, you do not want to break them. And just like that, the headlight's off. And that's the wonderful design about the E46, is they were able to design a pair of headlights they could pull off and were not glued in, and they do not um, leak water. So now that that's off, the last thing you have to take off before you can actually put on the angel eyes is this ring. I'm actually going to be swapping mine to a black one because I think it looks better than the chrome. Be careful touching anything so you don't get it dirty. I'm gonna pause right now so I can take off my old rings and then I'll be back to show how to do the new ones. So I now have snaked the cables through the light. Now, if you're working on this side, I definitely suggest removing the air box, but you don't need to remove the headlights. What you wanna do is you wanna take the cable and snake it up right in the middle there. That's the biggest spot that allows you to fit. 
and then just push it to the back and come over here to the back of your headlight and you want to take off this rubber seal how it's taken you want to take off the high beam light and take off the rubber seal pull it through that hole right there and then put it on the inside of the seal where the bulb goes and that will allow for a nice tight fit and now your cables are sitting out here the next thing you're going to want to do is take line them up and put double-sided tape that it's supplied on the back and put the two clips on the top to secure it to the top so we'll throw you on the tripod and show you us doing that So now I put the uh, sticky piece of tape around the whole rings. Try to put it towards the inner as side as you can see. And now I'm going to do the low beam and just going to go on. The low beam lines up super well. I can't say the same for the high beam, at least on the projector style ones. Um, it doesn't line up quite as nice. The projector style one, the low beam lines up like perfectly. But you're just going to have to try your best, play around with it and try to get a good fitment. All right, so lens is installed. Now it's time to plug them in. For this, pretty easy. Take the two leads and just match them up to the wire we ran earlier. Same colors to the same colors. And then the actual leads coming off the angel eyes, they just plug in. They are keyed, so you have to match that up, but it's pretty simple. Just plug them in, see how it looks. All right, so they're powered up. Look pretty good. Now, we're going to put the car back together, it's just a reverse process. We're going to put the DME box back on air box, put all the pieces in. Hey everyone, so the last part, I didn't show you guys this, yes, this yesterday, it was raining, this is a new day. So what I am going to do is show you guys how to wire up your uh, angel eyes if you bought the turn signal ones. And as you can see, the one on the left is wired up and has a turn signal on, and the one on the right does not. So I wired that up and a lot of people um, would say, why can't I just use these turn signals right here? You can't actually use them because um, I guess the voltage is too high for these angel eyes, so you want to wire them off the actual um, side markers. If you have an M3, it's a little easier because there's a little bigger opening to get your hand in there on a 330 or um, just any non-M car, it is a little harder, so I'll show you guys how to do that. The reason why they're blinking really fast right now is because I do have the double impulse blinks, I just have my hazards on. It will blink fine, I have the double hazards um, blinking. So I'm gonna show you guys how to wire it up like this if you would like it and um, then I'll close off the video. So first things first, to take off, you want to take off the side marker and you want to use some sort of plastic pry tool to get behind it and push this kind of like a spring piece of metal. Um, these ones are incredibly difficult to get off only because they're brand new. So that one came off easier. What you want to do is you want to pull it out, spin it, and then we're going to tap into this wire, the blue and yellow wire. Um, you can see it right there, and we're just going to use one of these provided like tap wire things. So now let me show you where the cable has to be snaked down. All right, I'm gonna do my best to show you where the wire needs to be snaked down. It's kind of difficult, especially with my big camera. But right down here, you can't even see that. So right down right down here, there is a hole. You can kind of see it right there. I know I have a lot of shit there, a lot of um, leaves and shit that I will clean out, but I don't have a leaf blower on me, but right down there, let's see if I can get the wire down there. Yeah, right down there, there's a little hole, and that's where you want to snake it through. Well, now you'll see where the wire is. The wire is about was about right here, where your turn signal is all the way over there. So you kind of want to angle it this way down, and then you'll see it fall right in here and I can't get my fingers are too big to get in there so I had to use the plastic pry tool just scrape in there and pull it out so I'm gonna do a time lapse real quick of me showing well me struggling to get it through because it is a little challenging
So now what you want to do is I'm going to trim up some of this um, wire harness protector, this is the way they wrapped it with some of this tape, and I'm just going to take my X-Acto knife very gently. All right, there we go, just a little more room. So now what you can do is, if you're fami familiar with these, on the outside of the wire, right here is where the original wire goes, and the inside is where the new wire goes. So now I like to do it by hand, but obviously you can't fully do it by hand. So I squish it down a little bit by hand, and then I come in with a pair of pliers. Once it's flush, you can shut the little uh, piece that holds it all together. Just make sure both wires are making full contact, and then you are good to go to put this light back in the reverse way that it came out. Just like that, snaps in. Now, I will show you how to connect it to the other part of the harness that is coming off, um, where the angel eyes come from, and then we'll test it all out. So, the next thing is take your cable, route it, how you want. I like to route it on the inside of the actual um, harness piece. Uh, I mean, the inside of where the um, strut for the tower for the uh, hood goes. And then right here, all you do is all you do is plug these two together like that, and they go in. And then you can fix the wires how you want. I'm going to um, neaten all these up after I show you the finished results. I'm just going to use some black zip ties to make it look better. Maybe put some Tessa tape so it looks more OEM. So now let me show you the final result. So here is the final result. I put new lenses in so they look super clear and I also put in the black inserts so they look amazing. I'll link these lenses down below. They are not genuine BMW. They are some aftermarket Chinese ones. I ceramic coated them so they look pretty good but We'll see how they hold up in time. And I also put those black inserts in. These black inserts, unfortunately, are pretty expensive new, and I don't even know if you can get them new. I got them from the junkyard for literally $2. So there's that, and this is what they look like when you unlock the car. So they turn on orange only because that's how they're, they're hooked up to the turn signal, so obviously they're gonna blink orange too. And then when I lock them, I think that looks so sick. And that's what they look like when they're on. They look absolutely beautiful. I think the solid rings look so much better than the individual rings. Um, I will obviously link these exact ones, the solid rings one, in the description from the Angel Eye guy. I'm, they're not, they don't look bad when they're off. I was worried they're gonna look a little weird when they're off, but they look perfectly fine. So now let me show you what they look like with the turn signals on. Guys, this looks awesome when you have the turn signal on, that the angel eyes also are the turn signal too. If you want, you could even code out the turn signals or do something so they don't even blink and just use the angel eyes, but I think it looks so sick. It looks amazing. So I'm really happy that I did get the turn style ones instead of just the switchback style ones. The switchback style ones, you can turn them to be amber whenever you want but these are the ones that tap there's a little like switch it comes with these are the ones that tap into the actual turn signals as you just saw that's it for this video if you guys have any questions or any concerns about these angel eyes please drop a comment down below and i will respond i'm so happy with these as of now if you guys want to see a review video which i i've already been using them for a little and i have nothing bad to say so I, yes, I would highly recommend these, but if you guys have any concerns, any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'll be sure to answer them, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Please subscribe. We just hit 15,000 subscribers. I'm so happy. Thank you guys for all the support and the continued support. Just please hit that subscribe button, and please like this video if you enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.